That's why I sit out here. If I could uh, carry your germ with me, I could maybe threaten our lives with a little ammunition, yeah, giving them the flu true. if they didn't knuckle under. <laughs> well, Mr. Bennett, thank you for seeing me. Uh, we will uh, leave in an hour uh, for a uh, nine country uh, visit. We start uh, in Ottawa and we go on to London from there and then on to Lebanon, Greece, and Turkey, and Italy, then back to Paris, and Brussels, and The Hague. And my object, as you well know, is to represent your views about terrorism. I will try to explain to our friends how strongly you feel about terrorism. Scourge. It's uh, becoming worse. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the time of 
curious things in life to leave behind. Our country is different and better because that was his attitude. And that's not just a phrase. Our country is different and better. That's a literal truth. Our country long before we were born. They won their great battle because America had a conscience that they could appeal to. Now you know what a conscience is. It's that thing that tells it that all people are equal. And that in America there should be no second class citizens. Our national conscience told us to change and start to be fair. And we listened and changed and we started to be fair. Ultimately, the great lesson of Martin Luther King Jr.'s life was this, business. And we can't rest until all prejudice is gone forever. But we're a better, freer place, and now it's up to you, as the future grown-ups of America, to use that freedom to make, to make a better life. And you know what I hope? The dream I have for each of you is that one day in the future, when you're all grown up, you will all come back here and visit on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And maybe someone up here will be making a speech. And down the line together, he played center and I played right guard. And in those days, you didn't have an offense and a defense. You played both ways. You stayed in the game till it was over. And he and I became, as I say, the closest of friends down there in the middle of the line where things got rough and tough. And one day we played a team in the huddle. I looked across once and saw Perkins in the game where he was playing. He had a, already an injured knee before the game. And this fellow had found out about it. Evidently he groaned at the wrong time. And he was using his dirty tactics to further hurt that knee. Berkey was biting his lip to not show the pain. And in the huddle, we were some men. All of his teammates, we wanted to go after him. The fellow, the other man. Well, I just couldn't go away without telling you that story. The world is so different today. And those of us who were a part of that revolution, Martin Luther King persuaded us. This bill, I think, is so important here, 1083, and by 1993, this should 
bring about a situation where all of our states will have made the arrangements necessary for the disposing of radioactive nuclear waste. So I'm delighted to have a chance to sign it. Since it took three things to get it signed. You know, we've been waiting on this. Thank you very much. We have been waiting on this thing for four or five years. We finally got it through, and it looked like it was going to fail to the last moment there. Illins and Stafford couldn't get together, and Simpson got them all in the pro tem office, and by two hours there, we finally got together. Well, I'm so glad we get this last session passed. Well, and this is a big deal of administration getting this done. Very Thank you so much. I appreciate your signing. Nice to see you. Appreciate your good work as president. And again, I said the best president since I've been in Washington. Thank you. That's good. Good to see you. Hope we can get some things done this coming year. I hope so too. Also, and our partnership is with the school here in the school of Collins itself. I think it's a junior school now. First to sixth graders, and I spoke there yesterday at the Martin Luther King Jr. School. I couldn't resist it. 
you know, anytime you pass, once you're past 40, you find yourself telling stories. <laughs> 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 yeah, never gave him a chance to mention that. <laughs> I also then had one of the students, a third grader, as a pen pal. He, uh, he called, this is part of the deal we call fun. Now listen, I just want to, now welcome you 